transmission. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Open Eyes Network News. I've been doing a lot of videos on the Mandela Effect lately. I've been doing a lot of conversations on the Mandela Effect lately on my show, as well as with uh, personal interactions that I'm having with people. And uh, I wanted to speak once again about the Mandela Effect and some of the things that I think may be an explanation for what we're, con what we're calling the Mandela Effect. And, you know, I don't really like the name Mandela Effect, but I guess since everybody else is using it, that's the one that we have to go with. Um, it's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate name, but it is what it is. Anyways, regardless of that, I wanted to speak to you guys about uh, one possible explanation for why this is happening. Again, I've done a lot of research on the Mandela Effect. I've looked into it for a long time now. I've been experiencing it for a long time now, at least six years. I mean, I remember going back, you know, going back in my memory, if I can rely on my memory. I mean, who knows at this point with the Mandela effect. Anyways, I can remember going back in, in my memories way back long ago and seeing that there were things occurring that were different from what I was actually truly experiencing or what my memories told me they should be. So I've been experiencing the Mandela effect for a really long time. And since I've been experiencing it for a really long time, I've been trying to figure out ways to um, accommodate the reality that I found myself in as an explanation. You know, what, what explanation can I find to help me sleep at night, basically? <laughs> because otherwise you can drive yourself crazy with this whole thing. And I do see a lot of people out there that are involved in doing the research on this topic and involved in conversating about this topic that are, uh, you know, kind of driving themselves nut nuts with it all, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Why are we seeing these things occur? Now I wanted to speak about this, um, possible explanation. Again, this is going to be completely speculative, speculative on my part because I don't think any of us know the real story and I don't think any of us are going to know the real story for some time yet. But we can start trying to figure out what's going on and try to figure out what may be the explanation. So, okay, let me just hit you guys with this and you guys can comment below, uh, email me. You guys can see the email address down, you know, right in the little text area here that you guys are seeing uh, underneath my screen. Feedback at openeyesnetwork.com. You can email me and or you can uh, leave a comment and I will see it. So here's the, here's the thing that I'd like to put forward as a possible explanation. All right. So there is a new and uh, not really even technically new. It's been around for a few years now, or at least been in the works for a few years type of computer system. And it's a quantum computer sp system. It's a, a specific quantum computer system. In fact, called D wave uh, currently places like Google, for instance, are using the D wave computer as a way to track everything, try to get everything under control with the uh, search volumes that they get um, and a way to be able to return the searches faster and just, you know, the, the computing power that they have with it. Now, the D-Wave computer is a very, very powerful computer. Normal computer systems, and I, I, I'm a big tech guy, I'm a big computer guy, so as you guys who've watched any of my videos or listened to any of my shows know, I'm big on technology. I love technology. I'm not a Luddite by any means, okay? So I love my tech, love my computer systems. Unlike a regular computer system, which essentially it figures everything out through ones and zeros, so on or off, when the power is going to it, it's on. When the power is off, it's, it's a zero. So ones and zeros, that's how it figures everything out. That's how it does its calculations. And our computer chips, although they can uh, calculate things at, you know, millions of calculations per second for the really nice, fast, you know, uh, computer chips, um, they're still very linear in the way that they do everything. It's, it's one by one, one after the other calculation is done, and it's all based upon whether or not it's one or zero. And so because of that, it's limited in its scale because you can only do so much with the linearity of it. The only thing that you can do from that point is just increase the speed, but otherwise it is just ones and zeros. Now, a quantum computer, especially this D-Wave computer, what it is capable of doing is figuring out things in four different ways. So again, 
ones and zeros. So one, zero, those are two of its methods of doing things. It can also compute things by one and zero at the same time or neither. So this gives it a very powerful capability of doing calculations. It can figure out four calculations essentially at the same time as a potential. The D-Wave computer, just as an example of its processing power and speed, is capable of processing over a hundred million times faster than our fastest normal computer system, our fastest non-quantum computer system, a hundred million times faster. It is capable of calculating within a matter of seconds a calculation that would take a regular computer system 10,000 years to calculate. And I'm not kidding. That's actually the uh, testing benchmarks that have been done on this computer system. So what would normally take our, our computer systems, the one that you have sitting on your desktop right now, if you're listening to, to this on your desktop or whatever the case may be, it would take 10,000 years for that computer system to figure out this certain set of calculations, whereas the D-Wave computer is capable of doing it within a matter of seconds. That's an incredible amount of computing power. Absolutely amazing potential for its uh, processing abilities. It can also calculate, unlike a regular computer system where it calculates in a linear fashion forward, it's capable of calculating backwards as well. So forwards and backwards, up and down, in three dimensions basically is what it's, it's capable of doing. This is an amazing piece of technology. It's, it's huge as far as its potential goes. Now, one other place has this D-Wave computer hooked up as well, and that other place is CERN. One of the other portions of this computing system as well is that it has in storage the amount of bytes that it has in storage are actually greater than the number of subatomic particles within the known universe. This is a vast, vast computer system. So again, CERN also has the same computer system. Now, again, I'm just getting into pure speculation at this point, guys. So, you know, take this as you will with a grain of salt or whatever the case may be. But one of the things that I am putting forward as a possibility with this theory of mine, with this alternative theory of mine, is that CERN, in its doings, may have actually, uh, how can I put this, connected the quantum computer system to the way that reality works. And I know that I'm maybe going off on a tangent or, or off on a, uh, off the rails with some of this information here that I'm going to give. But again, this is pure speculation, but I can see it as being a possibility. Okay. And I'd like to, again, get your thoughts on this. So what if CERN through their uh, doings has tied their computer system into the way that reality works. What if they have essentially quantumly entangled the subatomic particles of the universe to their quantum computer system? And what if through that entanglement, they are able to tweak reality in whatever method they want to tweak it? Now, one of the things that I see happening with the Mandela effect, and this is something that I talked about on a show that I was actually a guest on on Wednesday. Uh, um, the show was The Final Countdown, hosted by Peter Kling and Dr. Jason Rand. Uh, I actually am going to be posting that video up, I think, on my channel here on YouTube, just so that everybody can have all the information that came out on that show. It was a really great show. I was glad to be a part of it. Now, one of the things that I was talking about in that show is how the Mandela effect may be the first um, phrase of reality that we're seeing happen. So some people ask, why are we only seeing these things change in a small way? Why are these just small changes? So the lion with the lamb is, is a relatively small change galactically speaking, right? Or, or even globally speaking. Um, my experience with 
Billy Graham and his death in the 1990s and watching his funeral and yet he's still alive is a small thing in the global scale of things. So why are these small things occurring? You know, the, the mirror mirror on the wall being changed to magic mirror on the wall. Why these small things? Well, if you think about clothing, for instance, one of the things that happens with clothing when it starts to get frayed and when it starts to unravel is you start seeing the little fuzzies appear on the corners or on the, the collar or, you know, the, the shirt, uh, and, you know, the little frays will appear. And those frays are the beginning stages of the eventual unraveling and decay of that piece of clothing. So, too, I think the Mandela effect and the things that we're seeing with it are the first frays in the uh, fabric of reality that we have surrounding us. And it may be that, that yes, there's small changes now, but eventually it might get to the point where reality itself comes completely undone because of this decay and the fraying of reality that's going on. So, like I said, it may be that we're seeing the first stages of the eventual unraveling of the entirety of reality. And I know that's big. I know that's a big statement for me to say, but it really is one of the possibilities that we're seeing go on with this. And again, this whole D wave thing, I don't know if I'm correct with it, but it does feel like it could be something because we know that CERN is not truthful about the things that they're doing. And CERN has been messing with some stuff that do not need to be messed with. You see the statue out in the front of CERN, Shiva, the destroyer, and now we're seeing reality start to fray. It makes you start to wonder. One has to question at least a little bit. And I don't think that I'm wrong for questioning. I don't think that I'm wrong for putting forward possibilities of what we see happening. I don't think enough of that kind of speculation is going on, to be honest with you. And I'm not trying to put out any kind of disinformation with any of this. I'm not trying to scare monger and I'm not trying to fear monger with any of this. I'm just asking questions. Is it possible that CERN has tied itself to the very fabric of reality and through the things that they're doing, they are unraveling reality? Is this a possibility? I think it is. And it could be very well that this whole D-Wave computer system or the, or at least a, a version of it, you know, maybe even even a, a more powerful version of it, because we know that the technology that we have available to us in the public sector is way behind what is in both the military and a higher echelons of power are concerned. So, is it possible? I think it absolutely is, and we might find ourselves to be in a very large problem very soon, depending on what goes on with all of this. So. Let me have your let me have your comments below. What do you guys think about this? And again, like I said in my previous videos, if you guys don't believe in the Mandela effect, this video is not for you because <laughs> you don't believe it. So what good does a video like this do you if you don't believe in the thing? I'm an experiencer of it. Nothing can be taken away from me because of that. I know what I know. And those of us that have experienced this effect in such dramatic ways as I have know what we know. You can't steer us away from it. Okay. So this video is not for somebody that's like you move on. Don't troll. Just move on. If you're seeking out the information, if you're current, if, if you're, if you're legitimately seeking the information and you want to know more about the Mandela effect, and that's why you're here, whether you believe that or not, you know, uh, if you're just legitimately seeking out the information, I hope that this video has been helpful for you, but I'm speaking kind of to the trolls on this point. So, you know, uh, now, as far as those of you that are out there that have had experiences, you know, let me know, T tell me about the experiences that you've had and I'll make comments on it. I'll, I'll, you know, see if that's something that I've experienced too, because this is a, this is a constantly changing landscape that we're dealing with here. It seems like every day more and more new things are cropping up to look at and say, okay, yeah, that, that I think is actually a Mandela effect. 
I think that's something that has changed in this reality. Let me know what you think has changed in this reality. I would definitely appreciate it. So if you want to tune in for our shows, we talk about a lot of different topics, not just the Mandela effect, of course. But if you want to you know, tune into our shows, we are Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're always live. Um, and you guys can uh, call into our shows if you want to during the live shows. We'd love to hear from you. The numbers are given out on the shows. Uh, if you want to suggest a topic, we are more than happy to take suggestions as far as topics that you'd like to hear us speak about. And until next time, be sure to subscribe because we put out new videos every day and you guys can get all the newest information, any news that we bring out, whatever, you know, we talk about a lot of different things here on this channel and we're bringing new things every day. So uh, we will talk to you again soon. Thanks for tuning in everybody.